because it's pointing to this fundamental problem that we have as humans. And it's this idea of idol worship. What's up everybody, this is Josh from Practical Theism. I wanna do a quick reflection, like I have been doing, on uh, the first reading for today, actually. It's from Exodus 32, and uh, it goes like this, starting in verse seven. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I have pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, See, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. <laughs> then uh, I will make of you a great nation. Um, the point that I wanted to kind of pull out and uh, from this particular verse is something that actually is pretty pertinent to the Christian life. You actually see this permeate all through uh, scripture. It's all through scripture and it's all through Christian history and tradition because it's pointing to this fundamental problem that we have as humans. And it's this idea of idol worship. You know, John Calvin once said, um, you know, the heart is a fact, is a perpetual idol factory, meaning it continues to make something an idol, placing it above other things. I wanted to kind of define what an idol is and then transpose it to what worship really is. So we have an idol, it's an image or a representation of a God used as an object of worship. Now, what's worship? Worship is pretty much the adoration of a deity. But it actually, if you look at the etymology of the word worship, it actually comes from the old English word worthship. Um, it's the thing that has worthiness or it's an acknowledgement of worth. So it's, it's this idea of where do you place, what do you place in the highest level of worth? And um, what's really interesting is we as people, that's one of the greatest things that we could potentially give someone or something is our time, our attention, our talent. And um, the goal of a believer, one of the goals of a believer is kind of obviously to find this peace and this happiness that only God can give and uh, ultimately conforming ourselves to the person of Christ who is ultimately obedient and always looking to the Father who's fully aligned with the Father's will. So um, there's a lot of warnings against this in scripture. I just wanted to pull out a few of them um, just so you can kind of hear like the tone that is portrayed. In Psalm 16, four, it says this, those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. See, the problem with the, the condition that we have as humans is that instead of looking at God as who he is and ultimately desiring to see him face to face, um, we look at other things and run to them as if they were God. And right here in Psalm 16 says, those who run after those gods, they're going to suffer more and more. It says, I will not pour out libations of blood to God, such gods or take up their names on my lips. This is obviously um, the psalmist making a claim of what he will not do. The other one that I wanted to kind of point out too is in... Um, Obviously, we have a lot of warnings in the, uh, you know, in the New Testament with obviously not sacrificing to idols. Um, Exodus 20 talks about not having any other gods before me, not taking something and giving it ultimate worship. That is the adoration that's due to a deity aside from me. Um, Psalm 135 says the idols of the nation are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Um, we make idols out of so many different things, and something that I don't think we always see clearly enough is what the idols are in our own life. And a lot of times it can be something as simple as I'm making an idol out of myself or I'm making an idol out of my spouse or my kids or my house or my car or my job. And uh, it's anything that ultimately is gaining and you deem worthy through your actions and through your words of exactly what's of highest worth and value to you. So there's a lot of warnings in scripture about this. 
And then uh, there's a few different reasons why I think this is really particularly dangerous, just from a practical standpoint. When you look at something aside from God as an idol, it necessarily produces an inward focus. So you all of a sudden turn inward on yourself, focusing more on yourself as opposed to God, which is an other's focus. Because if we're truly participating in God's divine nature, one, his divine nature is one of love. It's one of focusing on others, placing others before ourselves and really focusing on sacrifice, self-denial and that sort of thing. Um, and it also, when you have these idols in your life, it throws your life wildly out of balance. Um, there's a great analogy I've heard. I love using it, um, but the analogy of juggling. I, I used to juggle when I was little. Some of you may are, be familiar with juggling, but the trick with juggling is not to focus on any one ball. So if you're juggling three juggling balls, you don't focus on any one ball because if you focus on any one particular ball as you're juggling it, um, you, you lose sight of all the other balls. But rather the trick with juggling to be able to do it properly is to focus on what's called the apex. That is the center point that all the balls pass through. And I think that's so applicable to the Christian life because the point at which, the apex at which everything in this life passes through and flows through and from is God. God's the first principle. He's the creator of everything around us. And by placing our focus on him, everything else seems to fall into place. So just some interesting thought there. Um, last thing is like for the anything that is not God in this world, anything in the created world, first of all, the, the created world is good. God said it so early, early on in Genesis, very beginning of the Bible. Everything in the world's good. But the problem is, is that all these goods of, these world, of the world cannot ultimately satisfy us. And one of the reasons they can't ultimately satisfy us is because they're finite in nature. There's not, there's not an unlimited source of these things. So if you think about money, if your money is your idol, you're always clawing and scraping, going after money, that money's gonna run out. And then what do you need? Well, you gotta go get more. And then you get more and then it, you run out. And what do you need? You gotta go get more. But rather, turn our gaze to the one who can ultimately satisfy, who is infinite in nature and infinite in his supply to us, and that is God's grace. The wonderful thing about God's grace, or what they call the loop of grace, as Bishop Barron puts it, is that the more you give your life away, the more it comes back to you tenfold. And that's a principle that we see all throughout Christ's teaching. Um, so there you have it. It's one of the things that you just gotta really, I really implore you, like really take a look and do some deep reflection on like what in my life is ultimately, am I giving highest authority to and ultimate worth and worship to? Because I think that's gonna be very telling about um, what kind of work God can do in your life when you do some deep reflection and prayer time with him and bring those to him to help have him help you, sh help show you kind of how to redirect your focus to God. Um, hope this is helpful. Hope uh, you guys can identify those things in your life. I know there's a few things in my life that I'm constantly going through and I'm like, ah, why do I keep going back to that? It's so dumb. Um, but we are constantly in transformation and constantly conforming ourselves to Christ. So it is a work in progress. Anyways, throw some comments below. Definitely hit that like button, pound that subscribe button like you mean it so you can get more of this awesome content. And from all of us here at Practical Theism, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.